You're listening to the Light Novel Podcast. Visit us online at lightnovelpodcast.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Light Novel Podcast. Uh, and I know our last episode, we said we'd be talking about Faraway Paladin, but then we got 12 brand new light novel licenses, plus the annual Kona Light Novel Gosu Goy listing got dropped. So we kind of thought, mm, maybe we'll do a news episode just to get caught up instead of doing a four hour long episode which i know certainly i prefer us to do because editing a four-hour episode i might go insane so uh that's what we're going to do tonight and then we'll uh catch up with far away paladin next time i'm just sir stone and tonight with me i have jean-luc hello bonsoir i have the return of kyle hola it's been a while <laughs> i have mirage Good morning. And I, <laughs> Terrence like dropped out for a second. And I've got Terrence. Uh, yes. Yeah, I dropped out. Sorry about that. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was the most inopportune dropout of all time. And I've got Terrence. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be an episode of the Light Novel Podcast without at least one, like one or two technical <laughs> glitches beforehand was it was it the last episode where all, we kept all dropping out for the first like 20 minutes we tried to record oh yeah it was just i think that was anyway. the last it was rough <laughs> <laughs> uh, either the last or the one before that was the one where you dropped oh out yeah that's right i minutes. disappeared for like 10 minutes yeah that's where my freaking internet you, you disappeared and me, i yeah. thought you were trying to get me to fill space so i was like ah. <laughs> <laughs> i know when i was editing that one all i could hear is Terrence kind of like ah and then he's this and uh yeah <laughs> yeah we're, we're all well do we continue but uh we don't know what to say uh, uh uh i cut that all out but i was like at the same time i thought eh, maybe i should leave it it'd be funny anyway um all right so so we'll get to what's going on uh first of all i mean aside from the things that i've already mentioned there's only one real other news item uh we had the announcement that sere gensuki spirit chronicles is getting a anime which is a light novel series currently being released by j novel club uh it is a isekai series uh about uh let me see what what does anime news network say about it because i can never remember meet rio a callous orphaned boy living in the slums at only seven years old he realizes he's actually the reincarnation of haruto amakawa a Japanese university student with a tragic past. While still reeling from his shocking epiphany, Ryo also comes to learn that he possesses extremely potent magical abilities and uses his new powers to solve the kidnapping case of a little girl. His good deed is acknowledged and he's rewarded by being enrolled into a prestigious academy for noble children? Which I think I understand the whole noble children academy storyline lasts all of like one or two volumes, if that, mm. and then he's out in the world or some such thing i don't know but uh apparently it's a harem series and i don't know anything else about it <laughs> uh so yeah that's coming out uh the geth is getting an anime another another light novel series isekai getting a, an anime series I, you know what i don't mind so much that light novels get adapted but i wish they did more that weren't isekai because and what i find funny is is that the only ones that really seem to get acknowledged by fans as having previously been light novels are the isekai ones mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like you don't see like tons of anime fans going oh my god adachi and shimamura it's like a great it's a great anime and all oh, you should check out the light novel it's just like oh what a cute yuri story <laughs> and you're like well it was a light novel check out the manga yeah, but, uh, uh, right uh, oh I yeah i <laughs> like isekai the Three fourth of uh, all light novels. Well, it's changing. I mean, it's certainly changing, but uh, it certainly seems to be the ones that I I would say the majority of light novel adaptations are isekai mm -hmm. in anime, which I think certainly leads to the perception of people that that's all light novels are. 
which i mean we know there's a lot more to them than that although yes there are certainly a lot of isekai light novels but uh but yeah i it, it's i always wonder to myself like is this a chicken and egg thing you know because or do we have a lot of isekai light novels licensed first in english because those are the ones that get anime or do they get anime because we get a lot of isekai licensed in english i'm still not <laughs> <laughs> i'm not too sure which is the chicken and which is the egg in this particular instance um but in any case uh the only one i'm really looking forward to adaptation wise is other side oh Picnic. yeah i really really especially god i hope they yeah, don't especially drop the ball on yeah, that especially because it's it is kind of like the monsters and things in that it's kind of hard to define them so it would be kind of interesting yeah. to see how they how they adapt them to anime Oh, yeah. Well, when I was reading it, I was like, man, this would like if you had a really awesome, like visual creator behind mm -hmm. this, it could be an amazing anime, especially because of like how the world blurs and <laughs> what's real, what's not real. And oh, it's such a good book, but uh, I really need to get more of it. I was going to pick up the physical omnibus now that they're putting them out in uh, print copies, because that's one I would like to have on my shelf. Plus also read. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then of course, well, I guess 86 is coming out too. It'll be interesting to see how well they adapt that as well. So, mm. um, but I am not going to watch the whole thing. I'll only watch what I've read because I don't want to spoil the books. Uh, so yeah, so that's the only anime that's brand new, a whole whack ton of release stuff, a whole bunch of uh, anime adaptations coming out, I guess, starting January. Cause of course it's the new season. Uh, so yeah. Um, okay, so that's really it for that. So aside from that, the, we can jump, we'll jump into Kono Light Novel Gasugoi first because, well, you know, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it, uh, partly because I did two, like, videos that were over 20 minutes long on each of them, but I think we'd be a pretty lousy light novel podcast if we didn't at least acknowledge it. <laughs> So, uh, just really quick, if you're not familiar, Kona Light Novel Gasugoi is a magazine publication that's put out once a year in November. It's really confusing because the year that it says it's for is actually the year that starts in January. So this volume was Kona Light Novel Gasugoi 2021, even though it's covering the light novels from the last year. I don't know. Um, I guess they figure that these are going to be the top light novels until they put out a new one. So technically for most of 2021, they're the top light novels i don't know in any case they create a ranking uh based on input from fans from industry people like editors authors uh and then they also pull professional reviewers and they create these lists of the top 10 tonko bone and the top 10 bunko bone list uh tonko bone being slightly larger in size than bunko bones uh i mean not always, but typically seen as a bit more of a collector item because they're a slightly higher grade of print. But, uh, you know, whether you... that that It seems kind of... We used to think that, like, one... That the Tonko Bone were more aimed at an older audience and the Bunko Bone were aimed at a, low, a younger audience. Yeah. But that seems to be kind of getting blurred. I don't know that that's necessarily as true now as it used to be, but in any case, that definitely that, that, that sort of... High, slightly higher grade publication and a little bit more of a collector's item still holds true. Uh, in any case, it's a very influential list. Uh, we were talking about it beforehand. Uh, it's been in publication since uh, 2000 and is it 2006 or 2004? I always get it messed up. I should have looked that up before I started. Anyway, it's been going on for a number of years. All that time for the lists, only two of the titles that ranked number one Okay, aside from this brand new one, uh, the two previous, only two, have not been licensed. So uh, it's a pretty interesting list to look at if you're trying to figure out what might get picked up next. And a good chunk of the ones over the years off this list have been an adapted into anime as well. So it's kind of a little bit of a peek into the future, if you will, to see mm -hmm. what's uh, what might come. So uh, with all that blurbage done let's get into the bunko bone list one thing i'll say generally about these lists i found really interesting it was exact same last year the bunko bone list is almost all real world slice of life stuff hmm. like the vast majority of it 
And the Tonkal Bone is almost all either fantasy or isekai. Hmm. Like, I don't know why that is, but yeah, it's kind of weird. So the Bunko Bone list at number 10, we have The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten. Uh, this one uh, picked up, they are actually getting that from Yen on this month because uh, it was on the list last year. Uh, it's uh, about a guy who lives in his apartment alone and the most beautiful girl in school lives right next door and uh, they never really talk to each other until one day he loans her his umbrella and sweet young romance ensues. Um, <laughs> it's all you need. It really is. I mean, you just got to give a girl your, your umbrella. The unique part about it seems to be in uh, that it's, at least from what uh, the blurb says, it doesn't seem to be harem. And no. uh, that's one reason alone that I might pick it up yeah. <laughs> because the other titles um, on the list, <laughs> they seem more like, um, yeah. Haremish. Uh, yeah. yeah. Haremish um, excuses for, fan, for, for lots of fan service. Mm. Oh, I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah, th this one, the one thing I have heard is it's just really, like, sticky sweet. Like, like yeah. it's really fluffy is, is what I've heard, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so but yeah. I've heard you, that... if... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing, that it's just, like, one of those warm blanket, soft, easy reads, like... <laughs> oh, yeah. might, might be worth a pick. Yeah, so uh well I'm gonna I'm gonna try and check it out. So we'll see what it looks like. Um at number nine, uh, I think this is the closest that we actually get to har hard fantasy on this list, which is mm -hmm. Propeller Opera. And this one, uh alternate world set during a big war between two nations, and this uh one guy of a noble house was expelled because he supposedly defected to the opposing side. Anyway, he returns and he joins the crew of a battleship that's being led by the princess. And she's like, I can't believe you came back. And he's like, of course I came back. I need to save our nation from the monsters that are commanded by the other country. Um, I don't, this is the one thing that like, still, I don't know the answer to is whether he means monsters as in their monstrous people or monsters as in like, it's going to be Kaiju. Mm. <laughs> uh, so yeah. the, the author, I believe there, this is the same author as like the princess and the pilot and pilot's love song, which were, if I recall, I, I don't think they had literal monsters, but those ones were also kind of like a lot of like, you know, ships and planes in the sky, kind of like, uh, what do they call that fantasy? That's kind of like, like a tweener with like wooden steampunk. Oh, steampunk. Yeah, steampunk. Kind of like a steampunkish feel to it where, mm. you know, there's, you know, uh, you know, blimps and like there's there's islands in the sky and uh, dog fights and things like that. Um, I like oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed Pilot's Love Song, so I would I would like to get one of this author's other series in English. So if it could be this one, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm taking. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at a quick uh, the entry on Anime Planet for them. Yeah, you're absolutely mm. right. Yeah, and yeah, it looks like a lot of it's all alt world, military, plain steampunkish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's that could be kind of cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So and like like I said, that's the only real fantasy title on this list. At uh, number eight. Well, it comes a Swell Ice a Life title that I think Mirage is absolutely right. Uh, fan servicey. I kissed my girlfriend's little sister. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's so about. I, th you know, how could we ever guess? Um, basically, his girlfriend has a twin sister that just conveniently becomes his. So I like the word "convenient." <laughs> Like becomes his stepsister technically, but yes, uh, but so like here, but here's the thing though, if the two sisters are sisters by blood, mm -hmm. and they're because they're twins, which means obviously they are. Technically, mm -hmm. his girlfriend is also his stepsister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm kind of. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've taken a look at like just the insert. Art. I don't know if you looked at it, but it does look like it's going to be emotional. 
like this is this is a little more dramatic i'm not saying that it's like you know gonna be like super artful or anything but i'm just saying it's <laughs> it's gonna be you know kind of maybe like domestic no kind of joe or something like it's gonna be dr- a little dramatic and i'm down for this i'm down for a triangle like that <laughs> well i i mean you know like this whole like the the whole parents remarrying and the yeah like relationships getting complicated because of that i mean there's actually another title later on that's mm-hmm. exactly that um has been going on for so long like <laughs> i remember watching marmalade boy the anime like back in like what the 90s or whatever and that was the exact same thing you know stepbrother stepsister getting yeah, anyway uh the japanese love things between siblings who aren't really siblings um like, in this yeah. case though it's complicated because the sibling who lives with him is not actually the one he's dating. Mm. Yeah, mm. I'm kind of I'm kind of going to watch it, you know, or read it hoping for, you know, either either the little sister loses, which I don't think is going to happen, or school days <laughs> ending. <laughs> but but I don't know. Oh, no, no. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you kill know. them all <laughs> well or maybe they just learn to share i mean come on um all right at number seven we have bottom tier character tomozaki which of course we are getting in english from yen on uh this one about a gamer who mm-hmm. basically thinks that life is a shitty game and then by chance meets a a girl from his school who's super popular and that seems to be leading the prime princess life and he finds out that she is actually a hardcore gamer too and she essentially says to him hey you know what it's not that life's a bad game it's just you don't know the rules so let me teach you and uh hilarity ensues and uh it's I, the first volume was excellent it's it's most people seem to have a very high opinion of that one uh, i really would like to read more of it so now this one i don't know number six is uh paradise noise so basically it's about a boy who posts a video of himself performing music online only he dresses up as a girl while he's doing it and then it sounds like his teacher his music teacher figures out that it's him and basically forces him to continue in his female persona to be part of a band with a bunch of other misfit musician girls. Mm. So, (laughs) so yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm I'm just like, I don't know. Gender bender. uh, Harem. Harem. Yeah. Yeah. I I actually, I had no clue. Like I bought, I bought, I bought this one a while ago just cause I was like, the (laughs) the cover looks interesting. And it's like, Oh, it's an all girls series and i i had no clue that it was like gender bend so i don't know i don't know if i'm down for it but i'll, I'll give it a go someday parents did you get the manga oh no it's, i bought the light novel on uh book walker but i haven't dug into the japanese it. version because we don't have the we don't English have license no we don't no, he's, no, he's, no he's, it's just he's the japanese reading it Ter- okay. Terence is one of those people. <laughs> well, oh, okay. well, I don't blame him. Like I used to do that like uh, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Hey, hey, if I could read it, I'd be doing it too. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, all right. So at number five, this is the one that I somewhat alluded to just a little bit ago. My stepsister is my ex-girlfriend. I don't think I really mm. need to say anything more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, nope. they dated. They broke up. They're now living together because their parents got married. The end. Um, you know, and fan servicey stuff. I mean, even in the description, they actually like are like when they encounter each other in the bathroom is the very first thing. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yep, I know where this book is going. Uh, <laughs> uh, number four. This one, you know what? Honestly, I think of most of the titles that we don't have licensed on this list, this is the one that I really want to see get licensed. The detective is already dead. Mm -hmm. So this one, basically the main character is a high school student who, while he's on a plane, gets involved in this sort of convoluted plot and aids a detective. 
and then they sort of team up together the detective is a cute girl by the way that's important um mm -hmm. <laughs> but they end up i guess deciding to continue to work together solving crimes and they're it it makes it sound like they are really just doing it kind of on the fly. Like it doesn't sound like they're really famous and making a lot of money. Cause he actually says in the description that they're broke half the time. Uh, but she dies in an incident and then the book picks up a year afterwards. So mm. I'm, I'm not really like, it says like he's kind of continuing her work. So I don't really know how it goes. Like, is he, is it one of those things where he's trying to take down some kind of crime syndicate that killed her and this is it? And he's maybe having visions of her to yeah. aid him or I, I don't know, yeah, but it I sounds super the cool. Verb is quite <laughs> yeah. vague about everything. So I have no real idea where this is going. And that's mostly why I, I'm waiting before I get excited about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. I've, Fair I've enough. seen um, the girl, the white haired girl in a lot of like different art. Like ob obviously she's, she, you know, she's the cute, you know, girl. If she's apparently probably dead, but, yeah. but yeah, they're like they put her in like different outfits, like, um, and this is for promotional reasons, but like Ray Zero, you know, they put her in like Amelia's outfit and stuff, but then they, they also have, you know, a lot of images of her, you know, in the book itself and i'm just kind of curious like you said like is she is she like a vision that he sees is it like in his mind and it's just like something that like gets him to keep going forward is she a ghost like i don't know i i, I would be know. interested to get this one so i can figure out what the deal is do they like right. do flashbacks i don't know yeah the, i mean the setup just sounds I don't know. The setup sounds cool. Like I, you know, I, mm. plus like, I, I mean, I am finding the more and more that I am a bit of a sucker for light novel mysteries. Mm. So I would, I, anything that's kind of more of a mystery vein to it or like detective type series, totally down with checking it out. Mm. Uh, at number three is classroom of the elite. This one, of course, coming from Seven Seas, and uh, I don't really know that I need to say anything about this one. I mean, it, it's it's pretty popular. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm actually catching up on this series right now. Yeah? I'm currently at volume six. Oh, uh, only? Okay, you're really catching up. Okay. So tell me something honestly, because I'm curious. I, I have heard that the first volume, even maybe the first two volumes, are not really indicative of the series. That it gets much better if you can get to about volume three or so. Is that true? Do you feel that way? Um, volume three is the best of the first three, I think. Okay. But uh, I don't think that it gets better from then on. Uh, volume one, of course, there are very many characters and they have to be introduced and lots of volume one is um, uh, is for that. Uh, but that's necessary. That's not really not really anything you can do about it because, yeah, well, the, it's a whole class that's basically the main character in, mm -hmm. this, in this novel. Um, from volume four on or and uh, volume five there are the number of people in there increases again because then people from other classes and other years in the school also become important mm. personally i find the main story of volume four and volume five not as good as the first three volumes there's a volume 4.5 which is um basically short stories which is good hmm. um uh, okay um yeah uh, no i mean i just yeah i just i was curious because i yeah <laughs> yeah the main problem uh, i've talked about in the on the discord in the last few days um main problem i have is that um the main character is supposed to be some kind of genius who ha has superior planning abilities. The problem is that the story is told from his point of view. And if you read the novel, then you 
always see his thoughts and you see that he is not a genius. He is actually quite dumb uh, in some aspects. <laughs> uh, and of course, um, the author cannot write a genius, uh, believably, if he isn't one himself. <laughs> so it would have probably been better, better to um, tell the story from another point of view. Mm. Maybe another character who's close to him, but not privy to his thoughts or, and or that's why person. what 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 i think the anime was better in this regard because mm. you didn't have all of his thoughts laid out for you right so it was more believable i get you yeah well okay that's a fair point i can i can see that all right hmm. all right so then at number two we have spy room uh basically this one they have a it is a world where wars are fought with spies and then this one, they take one of their most proficient and accomplished spies and they give him an incredible task that is, well, probably doomed for failure and death. But somehow it involves a seven inexperienced girls. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so this one does promising. this go the fan service route or does it go the action route? <laughs> Could go both? I'm thinking uh, both. They're, they're not... <laughs> They're not exclusive, but um, I'm not sure. Um, Let's wish I'm for both. Probably. Yeah, I wonder if um, if, if mm -hmm. the fan service is not too pronounced, I might pick it up. Yeah. If it gets licensed, it isn't yet. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds yeah. it sounds like they're going to be involved in some pretty, you know, dangerous stuff. But it does also sound like he's training them up. So I don't know how long it would take um, to get to that stuff. Um, the one thing to note with this one, I mean, if you like the illustrations, it's the same illustrator as the series we just covered, Side Character. And mm. it's oh. and they're also the illustrator on one of the series we'll cover from Jay Novel. Uh, my best right. friend's little sister is uh I, I forget I forget the rest of the title. My best friend's has, little sister uh, has it in for me. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, and then uh, finally at number one, we have Chitose-kun is in a Ramune bottle. Is it mm -hmm. Ramune? Ramune? Ram La Ramune? Ramune. Ramune? So what is a Ramune bottle? It, it, it's <laughs> a, Ramune is a kind of a Japanese drink. lemonade. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. It, it's a kind of soda that has um, like um, the, the opening is a bit wider than the normal... Uh, like beer bottle okay. and you have a marble in there so oh. like you you kind of uh, pop the the marble and then you you get to drink it and uh, the marble kinds of uh, sealed uh, the opening so like it, it's a gimmick and uh, mm. it, it's been okay. popular in japan for uh, a long well, while I've, I've seen it in anime like for a long time Okay. Oh, so that's what that is. All right. Well, you learn something new every day. Um, so basically this one, uh, it sounds like the main character has a reputation of being a playboy scumbag <laughs> because he's surrounded by a whole bunch of great girls. Sounds like he's sort of like the prince of the school kind of thing. Harem, fan service. Yeah, but then uh, he is requested to reform the, a certain socially withdrawn student. Which I'm assuming is another cute girl, because why wouldn't it be? <laughs> and and yeah, I mean, you know, probably exactly, yes, harem elements and all this kind of stuff. I, I don't, somebody said, and I, I was kind of like, oh, they're like, it's kind of like Tomozaki told from the girl's point of view. So <laughs> hmm. I was, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. I see what you mean by that. Okay. So basically, like the accomplished one, it's telling it from their point of view as they try to teach someone else to get their collective crap together. I get it. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, we'll see. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, certainly, yeah. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> but it is interesting. I mean, that's the first time it's ever been in the top ten, and it goes right to number one. I mean, it happens. It happened last year too, but, uh, but, well, it's funny because that happened last year on both lists and this year it happened again on both lists. So the novels that are number one on both lists, it's their first time in the top 10. 
So kind of. And the year before as well. Did they both yeah. fall off the list though? I know was um, it Rusty or Bisco last year was on one of them. No, Rusty Rusty or Bisco was two, years, was two ago. years ago. Oh, that was two years um, ago. And it fell off. But it yeah, and was it was also f one and fell fell off. Yes. Yeah, Reign of the uh, Seven. But on the Tankobon list for two years ago was a Bookworm. Yeah, okay, and, and that that has been on before and is all still on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the Tonko Bone number one last year is still on the list, but it's not number one. Uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades was the top one for Bonko Bone list last year, and this year it's not on the top ten at all. So, okay. which I mean, I don't know what that means because like the first volume is awesome; hmm. it's really good. I really liked it. So, but who knows? Uh, all right, so then we'll move over to the Tonko Bone list at number ten. We have Wandering Witch: The Journey of Elena. This one I'm sure most people now are familiar with because of the anime. The anime that seems to fluctuate between fluffy slice of life to, oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 uh, I love watching people react to things on Twitter. It's fun. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, yes so if you're not familiar with it though it's about a girl who is a witch that it's just basically a bunch of short stories as she wanders around the world checking things out um i think a lot of people and admittedly you know it can be a little off-putting at times are kind of put off by the fact that she's very unattached like she's really just kind of observing she has really no mm -hmm. intention of fixing the world Sometimes she gets dragged into things and she kind of begrudgingly does whatever, but most of the time she's just kind of like, oh, that's really effed up. Bye. And then leaves. <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. it's <laughs> it's an interesting series. I dropped the anime after three episodes and <laughs> I'm not really interested. <laughs> well, it was apparently the ninth episode that was a real kicker. So, <laughs> um, all right. Number nine, Dahlia Wilts No More. Uh, this one's a fantasy isekai series, although I'm not sure exactly... Well, I guess, yeah, it is an isekai, like a Japanese person who's been isekai to a fantasy world. Basically, um, it follows the main character who is named Dahlia. She was a person in our world, and she endured hard work and died from a heart attack. And it says, basically, as she hung her head down, so she was very passive and everything else. Uh, gets reborn into this world... And she figures that, you know, she's just going to be the same thing. She's passive and everything else until her fiance is basically like, you know what? I'm really not interested. Our marriage is off. And then she's like, you know what? F this hang in my head. Low crap. I'm standing up to crap. And so she starts doing stuff. I don't know. I, I like <laughs> it. It sounds like it's kind of a fantasy ish slice of life she creates magical tools she ends up befriending this knight who creates magical swords uh and so i guess the two of them travel and stuff like that and it's kind of like a will they won't they love fish type story so um don't know much about this one actually this was the first i'd ever heard of it uh at number eight we have afumi no umi Minamo ga yureguru toki. I couldn't find a really good English version of that name. I think it's just Afumi. Um, when the waves ripple is something I. Oh, uh, okay. Is that something you've heard? That would. Uh, that's something I tried myself to um, um, to translate okay. using Google and so on. Yeah. Well, yeah. So basically, this is again an isekai, but. It's an isekai where a modern history loving Japanese man is reincarnated as a historical figure in the Japanese um uh where is the Middle Ages. Middle Ages, yeah. It's like no, late no, Middle Ages yeah. is too early. Yeah, um, so sixteenth century or something like that. Yeah, it's like around the uh, at the around the time of um well, around the time of like Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, Iyasu um so yeah so it's in that sort of war-torn time period of japan and it's basically how he i guess changes history or decides to try and change history because he is now this figure who has knowledge of how things can go so um 
another prevalent thing that I see sometimes in like in anime and stuff, but I haven't seen a lot of light novels get onto this list or that are bestsellers that are like that. There's been yeah. like one or two, but um, yeah, there, there's not a lot of uh, historical ish book in uh, light novel, to my mm. knowledge, at least. Yeah, they're usually if it's like a historical, especially set during that era, it's usually sort of a a twist. Like you know, there was one where Nobunaga was actually a girl. Yeah, or um, uh, an isekai, or a dog, or a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, this one really sounds interesting because it uh, seems like it might actually go into detail about historical uh, stuff uh, more than others. Um, so I don't think we have any licenses of any novels where that go into detail about this period. Mm -mm. Um, so I really hope this one gets picked up by someone. Yeah. Yeah, no, it could be very cool, right? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. As you said, like, we don't have a lot that deals with that historical period and, um, mm. it, it would be, it certainly would be interesting. It would be, it's different. Like, again, it's an isekai, but it's a different it's that same sort of thing that we've seen happening with some fantasy isekai where it's like the person's reborn, but reborn in their own fantasy world. Yeah. Um, I mean, the closest thing I know would be uh, Kenshin, the manga. Mm. Um, that's a bit later, the period. That's end of the 19th century. Yeah, it, it's a lot uh, later. <laughs> like, yeah. it's... But it also goes into a lot of uh, detail about the period. Mm. if you yeah, Ken, don't uh, Kenshin is after the Meiji restoration so it's yes. like a good hundred years if not more after yes. Nobunaga so uh, yes mm. but if you disregard all the battles and fights then you still get a lot of uh, information about the period mm. uh, from the manga so I hope that this w will do the same for this earlier period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be cool. All right. So then at number seven, uh, this one, let this grieving soul retire. Woe is the weakling who leads the strongest party. Uh, this one just licensed by soul press and they're releasing it. The first uh, volume this month at the end of this month, December 28th is coming out. Uh, essentially fantasy series where, the age has dawned where treasure hunters are now raiding treasure vaults all over the world, seeking glory and riches despite the danger. Our main character decides he really sucks, actually, at being a treasure hunter and has no desire to keep doing it, but yet nobody in his party seems willing to let him quit. <laughs> and, um... That sucks. You know. Yeah, right? It's I do love this one thing that made me laugh. While his friends became greater, greedier beasts, Cry mastered the art of begging and pleading. <laughs> I just I I mean I'm not saying that it actually happens, but oh my god, I just had visions of him like on his hands and knees in front of some monster. Please don't <laughs> eat me. Just just let me go. <laughs> I don't I mean, that type of character is not really unique in anime. I have... <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't want you damn treasure. Just let me go. Um, all right. And then at number six, we also have this one licensed tier moon empire. Um, <laughs> yay. yay. <laughs> this one gets a lot of love. This one gets a lot of love and for good reason. Uh, it's a really good one. It's licensed by J novel club. Uh, basically about a princess who is led to the guillotine after her kingdom falls to pieces and, you know, gets her head chopped off, but awakens to realize that it's actually a number of years earlier and she decides that she's going to do what she has to do so she doesn't lose her head again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's a really good book. It's, uh, and it's also a really good translation as well. Mm. Because you have, uh, plenty of, uh, puns. What was puns in Japanese? And uh, they carry were carried over really well to the uh, to the hmm. English version. Hmm. So the especially the narrator and um, his his opinions and oh. re remarks they are great. <laughs> oh, he has lots of opinions. That's for darn sure. <laughs> holy. Um, 
so I, I actually have found that kind of funny like i think that was the only complaint that i really saw about that series was they were like why is the narrator just so damn hard on <laughs> mia all the goddamn time like cut the girls and flip and slack um <laughs> but uh but nonetheless though yeah it's it's a really good one uh filled with some really good characters and well done um at number five we have a series called babel now this is kind of interesting so um <laughs> This is by the author of Unnamed Memory. Unnamed Memory was the number one Tonko Bone last year on this list uh, and obviously has done fairly well because this series is the author's first work, which was published before Unnamed Memory and now got a re-release this year because of the popularity of Unnamed Memory and because of the re-release, it gets onto Kono Light Novel Gasugoi. Hmm. God, that sounded way more complicated than it needed to be. Um, <laughs> basically it is an isekai series about a girl who is, uh, swept away from modern world Japan into this fantasy world, uh, meets a, uh, mage who's basically like, if you'll teach me the letters and words of your world, I'll do what I can to help you try and find your way home. Um, it is interesting because it is apparently set in the same world as unnamed memory. And I believe somebody even said that the characters from this one show up in unnamed memory. So, uh, so the two are tied together, but it's kind of like, I, I thought it was funny because that was what frog wrote on, uh, Twitter. She was like, how's that for a power move? You take an Isa, you write your own fantasy world and then turn it into an isekai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't know if we're going to like, I think this one's only two volumes. Like it was mm. only two books. So it's not a lengthy series by any means. I don't yeah. know if this means we might, I guess it'll depend on how unnamed memory does in English, yeah. but, uh, so we should if, be begging Yen press to get this one. Well, if anyone's going to pick it up, it'll be them because mm. they got unnamed memory. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, if it does well, and they'll also be the only ones who know how well unnamed memory sells. Mm. <laughs> So we'll see what happens at number four. Uh, this one was actually on the list last year. It's called rebuild world. And essentially it looks kind of like a dystopian ish, like mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic, maybe steampunky ish type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially more cyberpunk than steampunk. Oh, okay. More cyberpunk. Okay. So Kyle, have you actually checked this one out a little bit or? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Um, yeah, it's about a boy who, uh, you know, dystopian world, blah, blah, blah. And in some ruins, he runs across an ancient AI. And uh, the AI essentially, you know, helps, gives him information, helps him train to become, you know, uh, just a very powerful mercenary. And so it's just him building up to where, you know, he's just fending for himself. To where he, you know, takes over a gang where he's really starting to build in uh, power and influence. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. All right. Well, I kind of wondered about that because the description said that he meets a mysterious girl only he can see. So I was kind of like, is she a ghost? But an AI makes a lot more sense. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Cool. All right. Well, maybe we'll see that one get licensed. I, I mean... Again, we, you know, sci-fi, particularly when you're talking like cyberpunk type sci-fi, we don't really have much of anything like that, you know? Yeah, so rare. Yeah, and now with, you know, well, hey, with that cyberpunk video game coming out that's got all the hype <laughs> with Keanu Reeves and such, I mean, maybe we'll see this one get picked up, who knows? Um, at number three, we have Unnamed Memory, funny enough. Uh, so like I said, this was number one last year. It's dropped down two spots um, about a cursed king uh, seeking out the world's mightiest witch to try and lift his curse and get his associated garbage all sorted out. Um, this one, like, has I gotten such good reviews. Oh, man. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the cover is beautiful. So I'm hoping it lives up to the, the hype. So yeah, it didn't, we'll it didn't any info how many volumes this one has? How many volumes does it have? Um, it, I, I did, I did write that down somewhere, but not I, where I'm I looking do, right now. If I yeah, remember, okay. if I remember right, um, so the first I think three volumes were like an arc, 
and then they started the next arc. I want to say it's at five volumes, but that that could have been what it was at, you know, the last time we talked about it. But um, mm. but yeah, it is it is it is decently along now. Uh, I believe it's the fifth. Vol- it's five volumes is currently what it's at. OK, yeah, because the uh, the fifth volume just came out in June of this year. So, mm. yeah, mm-hmm. so currently five. Um, yeah, so. Uh, we'll probably have more. It just came out in English last month, so uh, it's still relatively new in our market. Uh, it is put out by Yenon, like we said. So yeah, if uh, we ever want to get Babel, I would say Young Yenon is the one to beg and plead to. Um, <laughs> at number two, we have Ascendance of a Bookworm. Uh, this one about a modern day Japanese woman who absolutely adores and loves books who dies tragically because of books. (laughs) Um, And then awakens in a world with a very low literacy rate uh, is like in an impoverished family when she's reborn. And basically it's about her journey to try and fill the world with books. And I think it's the only title that's been in the list for five years. Yeah. um, Going Uh, probably. Is it popular? Never heard of it. (laughs) (laughs) yes ladies and gentlemen that is sarcasm just in case you weren't (laughs) yeah i was joking i mean how many seasons this has had what now three or four seasons of anime three three okay but there is a fourth announced isn't there okay yeah okay so yeah so i mean you've got a fourth season Uh, coming i think um is it the fourth that is announced or the third that it's announced i thought it was i thought it had three yeah, I thought oh that there was two. Oh, I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's. I think the third is the one that is announced. Oh, okay. So, okay, it's the third one that's announced. Um, it'll get a fourth one. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, you know, it, it's funny. Like this is probably one of the few isekai light novel adaptations that I have seen almost universal praise for the anime adaptation, not just by light novel fans, but by anime fans too. Because, you know, like, that is something you often see as anime fans, anime only fans slagging on light novel isekais because the animes never live up to the the book. And so people just think the books must be as, you know, bad as the anime. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one, uh, I, well, I mean, like you said, Mirage, like this one's been on the list for years now. Uh, it's been the top of the list, and I think it's basically alternated between the top spot and number two uh, for the last, what, three or four years? And then um, it was in the top ten before yeah, that, like, too. So like the, the thing is, there's so much isekai coming out that, like, and they're not all that good, but people forget that amongst all those garbage, there mm-hmm. are real gem out there. So... Mm. Well, no. yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. Don't, don't yeah. stop at Isekai. Go further. <laughs> look it up. Yeah, it's a true story. True story. But yeah, it's, um, but yes, very well regarded. Um, yeah, so it was number one on Kono Light Novel Gosegoi, 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. and then 2020, it went down to the second spot. And then now 2021, it's still in the second spot. So yeah, I mean, four years in the top two spots, and uh, it was in the list even before that too. So yeah, it's uh, it is a pretty powerhouse type series. Um, and then at number one we have Ishura. Uh, this one uh, basically this sounds kind of cool actually. Um, well, I mean, okay, if you're into like big battle royale type series, uh, essentially it's set in a fantasy world where the demon lord has now been defeated, and essentially. All that are left are all of these ridiculously OP heroes who help take down the Demon Lord, who are now like, what do I do now? Well, I want to be the strongest. The only way to be the strongest is I got to kill all the other heroes. (laughs) Yeah. I'm personally a bit wary about um, Highlander plotlines in general, (laughs) especially if, uh, if there's no good reason. For the for people to, to, just to kill each other just to be the best uh, is not a good reason to kill each other. There yeah, must well, be there must be only one. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I and that's there. There must be more to it. I mean, I don't. I, mm. Again, like you know, all we all I know about it is the little blurb that you're. Re I'm reading off of online, right? I mean, I have no idea yeah. what the. There might like, be a reason. Yeah, there might be reason, but uh, yeah. Japanese stories not always have a good reason for mm. that. I mean, Fair. <laughs> there was, um, I don't remember the name of the anime right now, there was um, f uh, there was an anime f um, first season, They there was a group of 12 girls who ha all came together, had special powers, and in the second season, for some reason, they all had to fight each other, <laughs> and that was um, My Hime. My Hime. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Never, that was good. <laughs> the first the first half was was great. I was I was I loved the series, and then second half, and now you have to kill each other. Why? Just because it's fate? Because this one person tells you to? No, it, it's um, there, there's rewatch re it. Was, like there, there's an entire like ritual and like there, there, yes, I know. There, uh, yeah, I, but I, there's I, a reason for it. Like. <laughs> Yes, and I didn't buy that reason. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, the, your your argument at, at first was that there there was no reason. Like, but there, no there's one. Reason, if no. you find it dumb, it's okay. But like, yeah. there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason. The reason might suck, but there is a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, if this is a similar reason, then I'll steer clear of this. Yeah, and not not to not to say that if it's on. Kono light novel Gasugoi. It's got to be amazing, but you know, I, I just you you would hope if it's if it's this high on the list that that it is that it is that good that that there is well, some reason to put it above other stuff. Yeah, well, this one, um, just I mean, a little bit more sort of uh, clarification on it. Mm -hmm. So, and not only was the top of the Tonkobon novel list, but it was also the top of the new title category list. Mm. And apparently it did so with the most number of votes, of votes that have ever been recorded for a light novel series in the guidebook's history. Mm. So, huh. I, I mean, just uh, to put it into context, this is currently now a record-setting light novel for Kono Light Novel Gasugoi because it has received more votes to put it into those top of those categories than any other title ever has. Which, when you consider, like, the behemoths that have been on the Kona Light Novel Gasugoi list is is considerable. Um, now, again, is that highest number because they have more people voting now than they did 15 years ago? Or is that highest percentage of vote? I don't know. But uh, but still, uh, you know, let's let's fingers crossed. Hope that it's somewhat decent because I imagine we're going to see this one get licensed. Mm -hmm. The yeah, I, I would find it very hard with it doing that well that it would not get picked up so we'll see we'll see all right so that is kono light novel gasu goi so let's get on to the licenses because that's what most people are interested in because they're like what the heck can i read now <laughs> or or soon yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so um we'll do j novel club first uh they brought out five they've got five light novels coming and, you know, God bless them. Like, three of the five are Slice of Life. God, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It was, did Alex like throwing down the gauntlet from Tentai Books? I'm going to do Slice of Life. Did it kind of bring the monsters to life? Or I think is this so. Just... <laughs> yeah, well, cause, I... Cause... I mean, you could argue that the other two are also Slice of Life in a way. In a way, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um yeah okay yeah i see what you're saying i don't know whether i totally buy that argument but okay <laughs> um but i well i mean i again i think this might also be just what we're seeing is that you know when I, covering kona light novel gosu goi right like you you have the bunko bone list which aside from one pure fantasy title everything else is essentially slice of life other than i mean we could argue spy room is kind of an alt reality mm. but but i mean for the most part it's all modern world the vast majority of it is all like romantic comedies 
Slice of Life. I mean, Slice, slice of Life is the genre. The, uh, you can have Slice of Life in a fantasy world. Well, you can, mm. for sure, yeah. Absolutely, you can. But, uh, you know, I don't think Propeller Opera exactly smacks of Slice of Life. No. <laughs> I feel very but comfortable you... calling that the only fantasy title on the list. <laughs> but... Um, I'm probably uh, I'm I'm not uh, talking about Chronolite novel Gasugoi. I'm talking about the uh, J novel club releases. Mm, mm. Well, I mean, definitely the two fantasy on this list. I mean, really, the one is it like would we call like I don't know if about we'll talk about we'll talk about it when we get there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. So, um, well, actually, we'll talk about it right now because I'll I'll talk about it first. Uh, so the first title that they picked up was the Apothecary Diaries. Uh, this one in the East is a land ruled by an emperor whose consorts and serving women live in a sprawling complex known as the Hogong, the rear palace. Mao Mao, an unassuming girl raised in an unassuming town by her apothecary father, never imagined the rear palace would have anything to do with her until she was kidnapped and sold into service there. Though she looks ordinary, Mao Mao has a quick wit a sharp mind, and an extensive knowledge of medicine. That's her secret, until she encounters a residence of the palace, at least as perceptive as she is, the head eunuch, Jinshi. He sees through Mao Mao's facade and makes her a lady-in-waiting to none other than the emperor's favorite consort, so she can taste the lady's food for poison. So, this one, uh, doing quite well in Japan. Um, and it is one that I know I have wanted to see get licensed for a while because it is not really like any, it's kind of like blending that whole mystery, mm -hmm. uh, slice of like slice of life, like Mirage was saying, but obviously set in a more, um, historical, historical setting. setting. Yeah. yeah. And that was something that I was going to ask. Cause I don't know if any of you guys have read this or know about it. Is it actually like a, is it actually set in our world? time period or is it an alternate world that reflects it's never explicitly mentioned but it greatly resembles ancient china yeah that's what i was gonna say mm -hmm. okay so so not necessarily that it is ancient china but they certainly seem to have borrowed heavily from mm -hmm. ancient chinese history okay yeah the names uh for, for example the culture um is um pretty much um taken from china uh the world building is excellent in this one mm. you right. get a lot of a uh, lot of um, information about how people are living um the customs and the culture huh. well yeah, i'm uh i'm currently reading the prepub right of volume one okay and i like it very much mm. all right cool well, like I said, it's one that I know had showed up on the, you know, it's it's shown up on the bestseller lists. Um, I'm pretty sure it was on a previous Kono Light novel, Gasugoi, within the last couple of years. Um, you know, it's it's one of those titles that I've encountered, come across a couple of times that I always thought to myself, that would be neat. Like, it, it's not, it's not really like anything we have where it's combining those sort of different elements that, that the history uh, uh, culture slice of life, um, mystery and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. I'm... So far, it seems to be mostly shorter, um, story arcs. Oh, okay. Each two, one or two chapters, um, where she encounters one phenomenon and helps solve it. Hmm. Um, made sometimes it's an illness, sometimes it's uh, something else that um. <laughs> Other people explain with superstitions, and she finds the uh, scientific uh, explanation for. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Cool. I'm uh, looking forward to checking that one out. I'm kind of hoping they do a print release of that one. I don't know if they they didn't mention that the, that one doesn't have a print release, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't follow print releases as much mm. because I get everything in um, as ebook. E e yeah, I just yeah, I, I didn't I know. Uh, I think it depends on how much uh, the well, not how much, but how well does a digital copy. Yeah, it typically does, but there's been the odd series that they've licensed because they knew it would be big enough that they announced a print version right away. But um, 
I guess this one hasn't really been tested too heavily in our market yet. So, cause I didn't somebody else license the manga version of this. Yeah. No idea. I don't apothecary remember. diaries. Yeah. Uh, Square Enix. I thought did. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be. Hmm. Okay. That makes ah, sense. yes. Yep. You're right. It is Square Enix. Yes. So, hmm. um, yeah. So, and in fact, the first volume of that is coming out December. So, all right. So, yeah, I, I thank you, Terrence. I, I thought I had seen it that they, somebody had licensed the manga for it. All right. So, the next one, uh, this is the other sort of, well, it is a fantasy. It's an isekai, but, you know, gets, gets into other stuff. Mm. And that's the un- ideal sponger life. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened this has with- been wanted by a lot of people, eh? Like, yeah, well, yeah. It, is it like Vertical or 7C that got the manga like last year? 7C's got the manga, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. But why? How did they let this one slip through their gr- Like, I, I don't know. Did it, did it not sell? Se- like, I think it's selling well as a manga. I don't. I don't get why they didn't grab the white novel. It makes no sense to me. Like it, this would have been the perfect title to grab to launch your airship line. Like, but but again, you know, I'm perfectly fine with J novel getting it. But I know a lot of people that love physical releases um, might be like, eh, you know. Yeah, I but... would have preferred physical, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I might grab it digital. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm agree with you. I'm, conf- I was confused why the J novel got this one. The only thing I can think of is that it came down to some kind of politics and bidding war. I don't know. Mm. Either that, or you know, maybe the manga hasn't done as well because people who know this title were more, you know, mm. wanting the light novel, and so I don't know. I have no idea, but. um Yamai Zenjiro is your everyday office worker in modern Japan. One morning, he suddenly finds himself summoned to a tropical world where dinosaurs roam the land. He is told that this is the kingdom of Kapua, and the person who summoned him is its monarch, Queen Aru, who wants him to marry her and leave his old life behind for a life of carefree extravagance as her prince consort. The reasons for her offer are many and varied, but she needs an heir and she wants him to be the one to provide it. If he accepts, he'll never have to work again, lazing around in luxury with no worries other than securing the kingdom its next monarch. Certainly sleeping with the buxom beauty is far from a hardship, but is everything really as it seems? He'll also need to give up everything he knows on earth. Is he ready to drop it all at a moment's notice for her sake? And how well will he be able to navigate the politics, people, and culture of this new world if he does. So um I that is one thing I have heard about this book is that despite the initial the despite the title and the initial idea that this guy's basically being summoned to just be, you know, mm-hmm. a boy toy to give her a baby. Um I I understand it has a lot more to it, like the politics and everything, and and plots and all that are yeah, he, actually pretty interesting. I mean, but like it's, he, it's pretty unlikely that he'll spend the the thirteen volumes that are out in Japan now all lazing around in the palace because <laughs> that would get pretty boring quite soon. Yeah, but the thing is, like from the from the get go, like he is proposed a life of laziness, so. Since he doesn't like his life on earth with uh, like uh, the, his job and everything, like he, he accepts. Like, and uh, well, if you've seen uh, pictures of uh, like, uh, yeah. uh, what was her name? Like, n- Aura, Aura, yeah, Aura. Like, I had Aqua <laughs> in, in my head, but uh, yeah, it's Aura. Like, if you've seen like pictures of Aura, like. You'd accept that deal, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of the, people are going to be buying this one because of war. <laughs> yeah, but the the thing is, is that once he accept and he start lazing around, it's really since he's the king. Even if like it's uh, Aura that's uh, leading the the country, he still has to act and be present as a king and Mm. sooner 
rather than later, uh, you'll get strong in all of uh, the politics and everything. So, like, it's interesting. Like, yeah, I heard, uh, you know, just from, you know, hearsay about about the book online, like, no, and no real spoilers or anything, but I heard that, like, he's treated not as her equal in public, but in private, uh, she and him treat each other as equals. And, like, she consults with him over, you know, matters of the state or whatever that they're in, the country they're in. So, so I, I don't know, like, maybe he is a puppet husband, but then, you know, in private, well, you know, he's, he's doing a lot to enact change. Well, ma mainly it's because, uh, like, in that world, the, um, there's magic and, mm. like, royal family in their blood, they have a special uh, kind oh, yeah. of magic that is outside of the four element that every people can use. And th there was a war, and Aura is mainly the only successor to the throne. So, mm. yeah. like, um, and that will is patriarchal. So, her being a queen. Like the, there's a reason why why she summoned him from Earth to join mm -hmm. her. So I won't spoil everything, but the, like there's a reason there. And well, it's not really a spoiler because it's basically the first chapter when, when oh, okay. she tells him. Well, well. Anyway, uh, I'll just I, I won't go <laughs> into it because uh, like it, okay. it will yeah, take fine. a long time to explain. But like basically, um, since is not from that world and doesn't have any stakes. Like, uh, he doesn't care, like, being the king. And that's exactly mm. what she wants. Like, she wants mm. to preserve the role of country leader. And... Uh, because it's a patriarchal society. Yeah. And uh, if she married someone from, the, from her own kingdom, then that person... Mm. Would probably take the kingship from her. Well, not probably. Right. They will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Like, yeah. and uh, that's yeah, I get it. Okay. what she don't want. And like, you have all of the 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 politics because, like, you'll have people that will want uh, Zenjiro to marry like their sister, daughter, and whatever, just to get more influence with like the the crown. And um, so basically. Like, he's a puppet in the eye of everyone because, like, he he doesn't want authority, but like in private, she really respects his uh, his thought and hmm. all of his knowledge that he has hmm. from Earth and everything. And uh, like, I'm not even sure if it's possible, but like, he brought over a generator, so he's able <laughs> to. Play like yeah, a hydroelectric generator and a uh, fridge and a TV and uh, uh, an AC. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure how long you can last, like yeah. without something uh, oh, in there breaking. Like that's the first thing I thought about. If I had to had one month to prepare to go to another world, then the last thing I would take would be electrical applicances <laughs> that break down after three years. Yeah. But... Well, if you took the manual. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a manual will help you to build a new fridge. No kidding, um, yeah. Well, that's you, funny. You take a crash course. But I course. probably would get would take take a, a laptop and a pull pull down much of Wikipedia or something like that. <laughs> um. Hmm. Well, I, you know what? I mean, it sounds like uh, it sounds like, despite the setup initially, it uh, it has a lot more going for it. So, and it, it is definitely an enjoyable read. Hmm. I en I'm enjoying it very much. Uh, I'm uh, probably about two thirds through volume one hmm. right now with the prepubs. All right. Um, yeah, it's definitely a fun read. Good. Um, not sure how how it continues because right now uh it's just past the marriage um 
and uh, everyday life in this world will probably start in the next chapter, which will come out tomorrow or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, and then uh, our last three are all uh, very much modern world, slice of life-ish, rom com -y type things. The first one, my friend's little sister has it in for me. <laughs> <laughs> if a girl teases you, that means she likes you. Unfortunately, Akiteru knows from experience that isn't the case. Because every girl he interacts with shows him nothing but scorn, and he's not scored a single date from it. Luckily, he's more concerned with securing a spot for him and his game development buddies at his uncle's business. But when his uncle throws him a condition that involves playing the part of his daughter's boyfriend, Akiteru has no choice but to take it. What will his best friend's sister, Iroha, who bullies him relentlessly, think of the news? Find out in my friend's little sister has it in for me. She totally loves him. Come on, we know that already. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, this one's had a lot of hype, right? Like, I've seen this mentioned a lot. Yeah, a lot of people were hyped for this one, like in the uh, in the Tentai Discord, because again, side character it was the same illustrator, different author, mm. but but um, but this author does have same story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's like it's very similar in in terms of the setup. Uh, you know, you have you have you know the friend's sister, you have uh what you call it his cousin who kind of is like the tweener you know character and then and then you have you know obviously the teacher character so you have again very similar three three roles there you have the best <laughs> friend who's very popular and like kind of outgoing feeling i think if i remember right or he's like he's like a main character that's how he describes him like like a harem lead and uh <laughs> he's oblivious to the attention that he gets but uh but yeah, it, it does it does seem, you know, similar. And then obviously the fake relationship with Mashiro, um, which is his is his cousin. He's gonna try to basically get in with his uncle's game development studio. And the way he was planning to do that was to prove himself by releasing this like free to play game that was super popular on mobile phones. But his uncle ends up kind of blackmailing him and is like, okay. Uh, I want you to pr pretend to be Mashiro's uh, boyfriend. She's going to go to your school. And, uh, you know, this is basically going to keep the other men away from from Mashiro. That's 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 the uncle's reasoning. Um, oh, obviously, geez. yeah, obviously, this is going to create some issues and tension with the friend's little sister that, you know, likes him, but, you know, maybe doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, like, oh, I love you or anything like that. It's just, she, she's very much like a prankster and a troll. And I think a lot of, you know, whether you like it or not is going to come down to, you know, how much can you stand her? But also if you can, <laughs> if you can stick through, if you can stick through the volume, I think they do give a little bit more, you know, backstory and background to these characters a lot of them have more going on with them than you think initially. Um, mm. So, so yeah, so yeah, I, I do, I do recommend this one. I'm definitely going to read it um, through in English, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's got a similar setup to side character, but then obviously there's a few differences like with the game development team. Um, all the characters pretty much live in the same apartment complex too. So there's kind of a home home life versus school life and it, it toys with the idea of like identity you know when you're mm. at home versus at school um right. you know s secret identity cool. and kind of things like that um and then the main character's philosophy which is uh, efficiency you know his whole idea is to to get in you know get rich quick kind of thing but really get like a stable job for himself and he feels like uh you know, it'll get into it later in the story, but he's kind of dragging along all these people for his dream of, you know, becoming this game development person. And he kind of gets into the debate of like, is this selfish or is it selfless, you know? Hmm. Um, but, but yeah, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting read. I do recommend it. Hmm. 
So it's a little a little deeper than what the somewhat fluffy title makes it sound. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. from just from the title, I wasn't interested, but by earring Terrence, uh that sounds good. Yeah, see, right? Like it might be worth it. All right. Um <laughs> Oh man, you people with Shota complexes are going to love this one. Are you okay <laughs> with a slightly older girlfriend? I like how they say slightly. Uh, uh, first year high school student. First year high school student. Let us emphasize first year years. high school student. He's about 15 years old. Uh, Momota Kaoru just saved a beautiful high school girl, Orihara Hime, from a train molester. One thing leads to another, and they end up going on a date. They have a lot in common. They both love video games. They both jam to their favorite songs on mixtapes. They were even both born in the Year of the Snake. Except, Orihara's first game console used cartridges, and her (laughs) old mixtapes are all on minidisc. And, oh, her birthday is actually 12 years before Momota's. When her secret comes out, she thinks it must be all over. But will Momota really let something like a little, a little age gap get in the way of his love for Arihara? Find out if love really can transcend generations, generations, in this sugar-sweet romantic comedy. Yeah. I, uh... (laughs) I started reading the prepub, the first three chapters... I'm not sure if I want to read more of that because it's creepy as hell. <laughs> well, it's creepy, but I, I did like uh, meet someone in real life that adds something around those lines. So, uh... oh, I mean, it's it's one thing. I I, I mean, my grandparents had also a pretty large age gap but they met much later in life and uh yeah like that's, that's the a thing different thing 27 and 15 is very cringe worthy <laughs> i mean if this was the other way around and it was a dude that was 27 and she was 15 people would be losing their minds like yeah you know? and there are some yeah. things like yeah there's some things in the early going where she's kind of like deceiving him like like going on with the story like it's clear that like obviously she realizes he doesn't know that she's you know 27 or whatever and she's just kind of playing along with it again if you if you if you did change this you know to you know a guy and a girl it it shouldn't change it but it but i think it would make it a little even a little more creepy definitely yeah yeah but, but yeah, I, I just I, I do want to say you know this this author you know they've they've put out other stuff that we do have stateside um, at anime uh, they did uh, when supernatural battles become commonplace oh which, right yeah, that, okay. yeah. oh yeah so that they, one was nice yeah, I like that they, one yeah <laughs> and and they do have other you know not not quite you know as illegal uh, age gap <laughs> romances uh, they they tend to like older female characters um yeah they have another one that's you know uh about a mother that lives next door to a kid uh to a 20 year old uh college student um that ends up uh, asking her out and then they have one that's like a a senpai you know 16 and 15 i think so they have some other series that might appeal more um you know to people but this one this one's definitely going to be like it's going to be the initial reaction is whether you can you know at least even try it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I do think it, they're they're pretty good at the comedy aspect. It's just, you know, obviously this this one is definitely gonna be like polarizing. Just just the initial setup. Hmm. Well, we'll see. <laughs> mm. Um all right, and then the last one is she's the cutest, but we're just friends. Kai Nakamura has the average range of otaku hobbies for a high school boy, but the buddy he shares them with is far from ordinary. Kai's best friend in the whole world is Jun Miyakawa, his classmate Mm. known as a super hottie. Though Kai and Jun just met when they enrolled in high school, they hit it off with passion for all the same hobbies. 
When they're together, the pair never have enough hours in the day. Kai and Jun just can't get enough of each other's company as they chat about video games and manga or sing anime songs at karaoke. Mm -hmm. Love is fleeting, but friendship is forever in this, quote, just friends rom-com filled with flirty fun. Like, look at this girl on the cover. There's no way they're staying just friends. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this <laughs> this one is very, um, like, reference heavy. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, they, they talk about, you know, that they're they're both gamers. Um, they go to a school that is, like, okay with you bringing your Nintendo Switch into the classroom as long as you just what? play it in between periods. So, but what? yeah, so, and like she, she meets him and is like very cordial with him. He's like, oh, this is cool. You know, this girl. And then she like just whips out her N Nintendo switch and she's playing Breath of the Wild. And like they like they're talking about like what's going on, like in the game or on the screen. And you can tell that the author is a gamer. Like like there's other series where I feel like they'll insert a game element just because they think it's popular. But this one, at least, art? yeah, th this one, this one, it feels like he's an actual gamer. I, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, obviously to its benefit or its detriment, the amount of references. It's going to depend on the person that reads it. But yeah, I was mm. I was surprised how many like like they and they don't like change names. It's like this is Zelda. This is Breath of the Wild. Link is throwing a bomb into the lake like or they play Monster Hunter and they'll talk about taking down like uh a lightning god like they might change the name a little bit but you can tell what they're talking about hmm interesting mm -hmm. i wonder how many of those things they actually got licensed to be able to do yeah. that <laughs> uh, probably a lot of them because otherwise they, otherwise they couldn't do it <laughs> yeah no kidding well i just kept, i think about like uh sisters all you need how they put in little asterisks and stuff to blank out names of things so that yeah. they wouldn't get nailed with the copyright I mean, issue. Yeah. They, they, they get, they put blanks in stuff like Doraemon and that stuff is 30 years old. Yeah. Or not, or... yeah. And, <laughs> and, and there's, there's a lot of manga referenced in this too. They're both, they both have hmm. manga collections and they start talking about like their shoujo manga and like, they start talking about like my little monster, which, you know, people know, like, and like just going over like a certain character. Oh, I love that character. So yeah, it's it's really gonna depend if if you like this series. It'll depend on you know if you if you get the references or if you can kind of understand the like that that attitude of you know that kind of like otaku personality. And you know, obviously, it's the friendship too. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well then. Uh, okay. Cool. So that's what J Novel Club has on tap. Uh, now we'll move over to Seven Seas, who uh, have seven New Light novel series. Uh, they also announced that they are starting a imprint for their light novels called Airship. Uh, now, if you've followed Seven Seas, they, of course, have a imprint called Ghost Ship, which is their racier, more hentai-ish manga line. Um, so Airship is now what they're going to do for light novels. I'm guessing that it's because they have so many light novels now that they're publishing. Uh, they want to differentiate between what's because they have a number of titles where they have both the manga and the light novel. So by using this airship in print, it makes it really clear, which is which, which is, you know, what Yen on did obviously with the Yen on and Yen press. Um, all right. So first up we have the haunted bookstore gateway to a parallel universe. Uh, there's currently four volumes in Japan for this one. Ever since she was three years old, Kaori has lived in a bookstore where the boundaries between the mortal realm and the spirit realm are blurred. Her adoptive father, who lives with her in this magical space, is a spirit himself. One day, Kaori comes across a bleeding young man who has stumbled into the spirit realm just as she did when she was a small child. Though the young man is an exorcist who has vowed revenge against all spirits, Kaori decides to embrace kindness and help him find his way back home. This supernatural book series focuses on a different adventure in each volume and features stunning wraparound cover illustrations by Muna Shichi. And I will say that the cover illustrations are gorgeous, honestly. Mm. Um, 
this one, I, you know, when they announced this one, uh, like even in comparison to all the other ones that they licensed, this one, I was like, man, this is something that I want. I have been saying I want more of, which is that kind of urban supernatural paranormal mm-hmm. type story. You know, we, there's so many like anime and everything about, uh, occult school clubs and exorcists and all this kind of stuff in, uh, but, but we don't really have any light novels. Like Boogie Pop is probably the closest we have to sort of a urban fantasy in terms of being our world with hidden elements and stuff like that in it. Um, I'm not sure. When I read the blurb, I got more vibes that it sounds like Restaurant to Another World with less hmm. cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. I mean, I like obviously I think, yes, there's going to be alternate like a spirit reality but i don't think it's necessarily but i don't know like i don't know how much the, the it's, bookstore it's a bookstore not not a restaurant but it's about other people in each book and each people each person's story um for every book um so it sounded quite similar what? to me like so a... i still think hmm. think it's interesting i'm if it's uh, i i'm certainly going to pick up at least volume 1 and have a look. I'm still not sure if it's going to be much of a mystery series. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be like kind of vignette where it's like they'll just like go in, they'll do one character's story, and then uh, send them on the way, and the next chapter is, is just a totally new character's story that they're examining. Well, I don't or know. the next I, book, at least. I mean, it says, um, it says the book focuses on a different adventure in mm. each volume. So I don't necessarily like, again, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Um, it could even be that the spirits escape into our world and it's her and this exorcist that she's working, that she has in the place now, um, you know, helping out with each problem. I don't know, but I think like what they're trying, uh, what I got from it was not necessarily that it was going to focus on different characters or anything, but that it was more of a, Um, the characters were going to do different sort of things each book. It wasn't like there was like an overarching storyline per se. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was what I got uh, from it. So I I don't, uh, obviously I don't know yet, but when when it says she decides to help him find his way back home, um, that um, for me, that implies that he will be at home uh, in the next volume and there will be, other characters finding their way to the bookstore in the next volume. Maybe. I mean, it could be. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know. But uh, I am curious to find out. Uh, yep. We're going to be waiting a long time, though. Apparently, it's not coming out until October next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ouch. So, uh, so, don't, so don't burn the midnight oil waiting for that one, because you'll run out. Um, <laughs> all right, next up. Guys, it's an isekai sci-fi. I, I want that one. I really yeah. want that one. <laughs> Reborn it's sci-fi, can it be an isekai? I know, right? <laughs> Reborn as a space mercenary. I woke up piloting the strongest starship. Uh, Sato Takahiro was an ordinary office worker and hobbyist gamer until the day he woke up on a spaceship, one that strangely resembled a craft from a favorite space shooter game. With a decked out ship, a crew full of babes, and a fantastic (laughs) universe to explore, he's going to make the most of his good luck and create the life he's always dreamed of. So this sounds like he starts out with a harem the moment he gets yeah. to this new well, world. It, it doesn't start out with one, but uh, it kind of happened in the first week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like... Who would want like to pilot a ship across the universe with like a, an opai chicks and a space elf? So okay, sounds well, good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but I, like we've had probably s- going to pa- pass on this one. <laughs> like I'm like I, I, I'm not... I only checked a bit, yeah. but like just the the. Like the idea of having like a, a kind of space opera, it's something mm. that we, especially in the light novel, I don't think I heard of something similar. Mm. And uh, 
like it it kind of um uh we're talking earlier about like uh, my man older anime like there was like a uh start of 2000 and in the 90s like you had like lost universe you had like vendred like all of these like space action rm rm ish thing uh kind of want to read it hmm. yeah i don't um like i i i don't know about the whole harem aspect of it but uh mm. i i am i am definitely up for maybe a slightly lighter sci-fi like i mean i know science fiction we don't have a lot of light novel wise i mean there's of course crust of the stars um you know, we had, um, oh my God, I can't think of it. Uh, galactic heroes. Um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've had, we have had some science fiction, but certainly not a lot and certainly not an isekai sci-fi, which is, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. Well, well, but then, technically, then again... technically every science, fi- or most science fiction stories are, uh, are isekai. Yeah. Mm, but like... technically, technically even, uh, quest of the star. Isekai. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but like Isekai, like take it just as a premise. Like for for the rest, like it doesn't really matter that the the main character is from another world in most of them. Like it, it's just to let you immerse more mm-hmm. uh as a reader. A shortcut for the author. But, uh, yeah, and it's a shortcut for the author as well. But uh other than that, like there's only a handful of isekai that really goes for the strength of having like a, a character being born and uh, raised in another world, like the different mm-hmm. knowledge and everything. Like there's not much of them use that enough. And, uh, but still, even if they don't, it can still be an enjoyable read. I think I think I'm with Justice, where I'm kind of like I'm up for sci-fi, but I'm I'm cautious because it is harem. Just kind of curious what they'll do, you know, like world building wise, you know, like I guess universe building wise, you know, like are there aliens in this thing? I don't know. I, I'm really curious what they'll do, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm not like super super into the harem element, but maybe maybe it'll maybe it'll be good. I don't want to pick it up just for the RM element. Oh, yeah. It's more for the space element. Mm. And like so far from w- what I've checked of it, seems like it will be down my alley. Might be not later on, but uh, I'll see. <laughs> well, it's like, I think my only big issue with it is that almost every single cover, there's four volumes, every cover has at least one fan servicey element <laughs> on it. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I haven't checked the cover. Oh, so like the I, second I cover has the second cover has the elf girl with a very prominent butt shot. The Let third one has a girl in a bikini on it. <laughs> the fourth one has a maid hiking up her skirt. Like, you know, I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> but oh, it's not I, that bad. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not. <laughs> I, I mean, again, I, who knows, right? It could be it could be a good series. Uh, I am mm-hmm. just curious to check it out because of the sci fi element, because, again, uh, you know, it, it 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 may sell the fan servicey bits on the cover for the sake of getting people to pick it up. Mm-hmm. But the book itself might not be that much. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes they. Sometimes they sort of bait you with the art of it, and then you get into it and you're like, oh, it's not as trashy as I thought it was going to be because of the cover. So, yeah, I think a lot of people are really hyped for this one, though. Like a lot of people on the forums. Well, like I said, I mean, it's, you know what? It's, it's something, it's something different, hmm? right? It's something hmm. coming that we haven't had. Um, the, the fourth one's coming out on December 10th. Oh, okay. Um, so it's, you know, it's something that we, yeah, it's different than what we've had already. Right. So mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, you know, again, it's, it's, yeah, I would like more science fiction mm. stories, but maybe not this. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Like 
um, that we don't have again. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I've said it before, like mystery is a a genre we're starting to get more of that. I really like, but, but actual sci-fi uh is definitely underserved when you consider yeah. how much there is yeah there's publishers that just do sci-fi like i think it's yeah. hayakawa hayakawa Shoba. they just do sci-fi like there's so many books out there like i don't see this one as sci-fi it's more space hmm. okay yeah i mean okay yeah like it's it's sort of like star wars compared to 2001 a space odyssey i get what you're saying yeah. but <laughs> but you know anyway I, yeah it's a space sp- opera just yeah, like star wars sp- yeah spaceships <laughs> laser guns i mean you know I'm, I'm done with it yeah uh next one that they picked up is reincarnated as a dragon hatchling <laughs> In a world full of dangerous monsters, our unnamed protagonist finds himself reborn at the very bottom of the food chain as an immobile, powerless egg. Even just hatching will require leveling up by fighting monsters. <laughs> He's going to fight monsters as an egg. Uh, the same monsters who'd love to eat him as a snack. But with the help of the mysterious voice in his head, he's determined to grow into the most powerful creature in the world. Uh, so... Immediately, voice in the head sounds like slime. spider. Well, it sounds like slime and spider. <laughs> I mean, okay, I guess we could have gone either way, right? <laughs> um, I guess slime is a little more voice in the head than spider, but spider definitely has it. And then spider, she makes it her own voice. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> but this one has 12 volumes. Yeah, I'm quite, quite interested. Yes, I'm interested how fighting as an egg will work. Right? <laughs> Right. Um well hardened. Just like a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Tackle. Hardened. But yes, twelve twelve volumes so far, then uh it will probably take some time to become the strongest creature in the you world. Would think. But well, I mean just yeah. looking at the covers, it looks like he doesn't get to be that much of a bigger dragon for a long time. <laughs> so well uh, but I don't know. It does evolve uh a la Pokemon, but uh <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> that's there's got to be that element to it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I again, another series that I don't know a lot about, but apparently, yeah, 12 volumes. It's not like it's new. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of these, a lot of these that they licensed were like pretty popular, I think, in like the web web novel scene. So like, I think some mm. people have seen these, you know, unofficial TLs or things like that. I think I think a lot of these were pretty popular there. And and some of them have manga adaptations, obviously, that people have seen before as well. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, sure, that would work. I get that. All right, cool. Um, okay, so after that, we have Accomplishments of the Duke's Daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, I think it's complete. It's There's eight volumes, and the eighth volume came out like two years ago, isn't it? Yeah, okay. December 2018. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Iris Almeria, the daughter of a powerful duke, is arrested and forced to her knees in front of her fiancé. Her betrothed, Prince Edward, is rejecting her for another woman. As Iris's life flashes before her eyes, she suddenly realizes she knows exactly what is coming next, because she has been reincarnated into her favorite Otome game as its villainous. Quick thinking saves her from exile, but Iris can't rest yet. If she wants to survive this world that sees her as wicked, she'll have to change the world itself. So Seven Seas has the manga of this one. They've had it out for a little while. So now this is their picking up the light novel. Mm -hmm. Don't know very much about this series, but I remember it seemed to be one that people wanted. Like it seemed to be one that people thought was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one's been going on for, uh, or might have been completed, but um, it started quite a while ago, and it was really one of the forerunners of this whole reincarnated into an Entome game. Mm, okay. uh, the curious thing about this one, though, it's like the reincarnation almost doesn't matter at all because it's more just picking up you know, where she's been rejected and trying to bring, you know, not just her life around, but the um, 
her province, trying to rebuild that from uh, just the kind of downfall that, you know, losing her fiancé uh, status brought her. And so, it, okay, sorry to interrupt you, but so basically, like, sh- her whole thing is that she this is like after the game has ended so she got the bad end and now she has to try and essentially put things together. yeah oh okay. yeah that's okay. pretty interesting yeah like, okay that is a little different yeah i think there was like a manga version of uh you know baccarina that had like katarina going in like later in the story or something it was like baccarina yes. on har- hard mode so yeah that's what mm. this kind of reminds me of the <laughs> way you're you're selling it but yeah yeah, I'd be down for that. Mm. Of the seven titles from Seven Seas, that's probably the one I'm interested most mm. in. Maybe together with Haunted Bookstore. Yeah, well, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't re- quite realize that it was that it was kind of like she realizes, oh crap, I've I've hit the bad end for for my character, and that's why he's picked this other girl. Um, that, that does put a different spin on it. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, but now the next one, we won't dwell on it too much because mm-hmm. it's a spinoff of a manga series, which is <laughs> Monster Musume, Monster Girls on the Job. Uh, believe there's only one volume in Japan so far. When 20 something Kurusu Kimihito became an involuntary volunteer in the government homestay program for Monster Girls, his world was turned upside down. A Lamia named Mia was sent to live with him, and it's Kimihito's job to make sure the sexy snake girl integrates into everyday life. In this novel spinoff, a new program hopes to give Monster Girls experience in the working world, leading to sexy uniforms, on-the-job shenanigans, and all-new hilarity. Hilarity ensues! They're using my term. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> um, this one's pretty so, much all fan service. Yeah, so this is actually written by the author of Monster Girl Doctor, which mm-hmm. is oh, interesting really? because Monster Girl Doctor, he said, was inspired by this one. Oh, huh, <laughs> that's weird. Right? So it's kind of it's kind of interesting. So... Um, and the, the illustrations are done by Monster Musume, the creator, ok- Okayado. So it's the, the mangaka is doing the artwork of the light novel, and the light novel is being written by another light novel author who's written about Monster Girls, who was inspired <laughs> by this manga. <laughs> and it's not complicated. Get that. <laughs> it's not complicated i mean at all <laughs> yeah i feel like that's pretty cool how you know he basically did you know fan fiction ish <laughs> you know of this and now and now he's getting to work on it it's like it's got to be like his dream project right like i guess if monster girl doctor isn't over already it's on hiatus <laughs> 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 oh, all right um Now, the next one they picked up is The Strange Adventure of a Broke Mercenary. When seasoned mercenary Lauren is the sole survivor of a disastrous battle that destroys the rest of his company, he must find a new way to survive in the world. With no friends or connections, he has no hope of joining another adventuring party until enigmatic priestess Lapis offers to partner up with him. But there's more to Lapis than meets the eye. And Lauren soon finds himself bound to a fate stranger than he imagined. Uh, so this one, they uh, it has thirteen volumes in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they got actually both the manga and the light novel for this one. So, um, and again, I don't they in their twi- in their Twitter announcement they were like, oh, so many of you all know this one, and I was and I had to scratch my head and I was like, I'm not one of those people. This yeah, um, I'm, the, 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 I'm, I'm I, not I either. Have heard, the, I never heard of the it. The author either. is um the same that was on New Life Plus that got you know obviously everything got oh. canceled. Yeah, it's Mine. Yeah, it's the same author as as that that the anime got canceled and the J and C series got canceled. So so the author has a pedigree. Obviously, they've they have had some long series. So yeah. So is this a newer the pedigree? This is, is I, I, one thing. I think he was doing them both. I don't know. You know, I don't know exactly, but I know this one had been out while the other one was out. 
This one has been running since 2017. Hmm. Oh, well, then that would have been around the time, wouldn't it? I'm trying to think of when that got, that all exploded. That was around 2018 or so, wasn't it? So yeah. he probably started mm -hmm. it like while he was doing New Life Plus. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Huh. That's funny. So, so they... I'm a bit of surprise that they picked this one up. Right? Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. I'm kind of, that's curious to me. I, it, may, I mean, I, it does make me wonder, like, I don't know, would an anime studio like pick up another of Mine's titles? I mean, if they're worried well, about the, sales in China. Well, the, the problem was the content. Korea. Like, mm. if yeah. he, mm -hmm. like, yeah, the, the content plus like the, the, the other's behavior on Twitter and on everything. Twitter. But, mm -hmm. but the, the thing is, if that new book is, like the content is fine. There's no blasphemy mm -hmm. or anything. Like there's enough time that passed that uh, I think people just forgot. Like mm -hmm. if you bring back the like the the new life plus or uh, something, people will will remember. But if you only bring back like uh, another series name that no one heard of, and in the small corner, like the same author, like people will just like the it will pass. Mm. But you see, um, if this has been running since 2017 and it's 15 volumes now, then this means three of three to four volumes a year. So it hasn't been impacted by the other series yeah. at mm -hmm. all th throughout. Well, everything. I mean, I th I think part of the other issue with the series well i mean obviously his comments were an issue but i think it was because people looked in the the main character in new life plus it was heavily hinted at that he had taken part in some kind of bloody conflict between the japanese and chinese where mm -hmm. a lot of chinese well, were killed well it's not it's not like implied it's, it's well, stated well i know it like it's, it's, he states that he killed a lot of people, but it's uh, like, I mean, again, yeah. I don't know if that was yeah, a but translation the, the, thing. Yeah, but the, the goddess really says that he, he murdered like Chinese people in the Nankin massacre. So like it, it's really re related to real world history. So the problem is there. It, it's in yeah. the content. So uh, like if there's any of that in that in that new story, well, it will pass like uh there won't be well i think issue. it's because this is pure fantasy that's why mm -hmm. it's managed to kind of keep going and not get pulled into the same yeah same thing but uh yeah i mean uh, yeah i don't know uh, again like that that was a an issue obviously that was a problem because they were it, it, that was obviously an issue because they were trying to float the anime Mm -hmm. was really like that seemed to be because the series had been going for a while yeah um I, and I think it, it was, was just the yeah i think it was already released in china for like a while too i think yeah like the light novels yeah yeah so i mean it's yeah anyway whatever we talked about that a while mm -hmm. back so mm -hmm. um the last title that they picked up is actually a novel and a novel that there was an anime based on it already and it's called hello world Naomi, a shy teenage bookworm, is visited by his future self and tasked with fixing his biggest regret. His classmate and soon-to-be girlfriend, Rudy, is going to die from an accident soon after they begin dating. But his chance to alter the future soon turns out to be far more complicated, as the very world the teens live in isn't quite what it seems. So, I mean, it sounds super cool <laughs> to me. <laughs> Hmm. Um, and I guess the anime a lot of people have said was really good, so yeah, so, yeah. I, I heard the anime didn't officially come out stateside yet is that is that right? yeah, as far as I understand, okay, yeah, I mean, I usually avoid adaptation, you know series, but I hmm. don't know, I guess if the anime isn't here yet, I mean, maybe I'll try it, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's typically my thing is that 
Well, I, I don't think this was adapted from the anime. I believe the anime mm. was based on this. Oh, was so it? it'd be kind of the same thing as like, um, you know, I want to eat your pancreas, that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Where the book came first and then the anime came after. It's not like the Makoto Shinkai where basically they're adaptations of the film, where the film mm. was the first primary source. So it says here also released as a feature film. Yeah, but I but as I understand it. I believe this one came out. The book came out first. Now yeah, again, I could be I yeah. could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what I saw. Yeah, that's what how I would interpret it as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah. So I mean, it like it sounds kind of neat. I'm I'm kind of curious about how this will be. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, that's uh, all that's coming from Seven Seas as well under their. Mm -hmm. Again, airship line, which I guess apparently all their light novels that premiere next year will carry the airship banner, and the light novels that they currently are releasing under Seven Seas, there was a I wasn't a hundred percent certain. They mm. said they will eventually transition, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they they're they're concerned about people that are collectors that mm. that are upset uh, when a when a when a book on their shelf, you know, the imprint or whatever changes and then, yeah. uh, and then the labels are totally different and it just is like an eyesore. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they'll release like concurrent versions or they're just going to, you know, eventually be like, ah, it's, it's just too much effort to, to do no, this. I don't know. They, like they, they might print out like the, the first few prints uh with the old imprint and uh, mm -hmm. then after switch to the new one so yeah. that might be a solution yeah so, but, but they'll have to it, they'll have to do that for every single release that's that's where it becomes difficult like all the new yeah. releases they'll have to do this initial print run with this other label and then another print run with a different one i mean i don't know mm -hmm. people that are only going for the new label would be bothered by that too. So yeah, yeah, that's true. I I, I think what you're probably going to see is that the series that they currently have under Seven Seas will just continue and finish that way. That that makes uh, the most probably. sense. Yeah, just finish out, keep that old label on those, and then just mm. new stuff. Just do it that yeah. way. But and and I mean honestly, it's not hard to do, right? Because they the I mean if if they're like any other company, if they've got the graphic design of the 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 label already in it so it's just a matter of them changing the volume numbers and stuff mm -hmm. when they do the book the print so i don't yeah I, I can't really see them bothering to change the spines or reprinting or doing no i don't think they're going to do that i think it just i think they just mean that as their light novels are released all new light novels will eventually be airship but they'll finish out the ones they mm -hmm. currently have as seven c's so yeah Alrighty, so uh, that is all the stuff so far. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, and I mean, hey, look, we're almost two hours. Good lord, okay. Um, all right, so uh, next episode, like I said, we'll be uh, finishing off the Faraway Paladin, so volumes three, and then four A, four B, um, and then uh, after that, I think. Well, I guess we'll see what we do after that. We'll either do sort of a, by then it'll probably be the new year. So we might do like our favorite reads of this year or mm -hmm. what we're looking forward to, or I don't know, we'll figure it out. And then uh, we're going to talk about So I'm a Spider, So What at some point as well. So yeah. So anyway, gentlemen, thanks very much for joining me in this episode. And of course, to you listeners, thank you so much as always for listening to us. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, bye bye for now. For show notes and related links, visit lightnovelpodcast.com.